Hey guys, welcome to Frank's Tech Help once again here in beautiful Waikiki Beach in Honolulu, Hawaii. Now the first thing you're going to notice on my desktop are a ton of MOV and MPEG files. Okay, um, what we're doing here today is going to be comparing output or export codecs for Final Cut Express um, using a one minute video clip that I've put together. And what I've done is I took a um, just a, a standard one minute piece of footage. I added in a few transitions, a few text transitions, um, uh, did some picture in picture, uh, various different, you know, just overlays, um, video transition, stuff like that, and came up with a one minute clip. Now, if you go to File and Export within Final Cut Express, you can choose QuickTime or using QuickTime Conversion. All right, if you export in regular QuickTime, you're going to have pretty quick processing time, but it's going to be a very large file. So if you're doing professional output, this is probably the standard way that you want to go, and this will link to your existing codec uh, for the project that you're using. For instance, um, my camera is a Canon HG10, and it uses the AIC or Apple Intermediate codec, and that's what this defaults to. But what if you want to do conversion using your own settings? So if you go into options, then go into settings, and then uh, up to the compression type, you will notice lots of various different codecs here that you can output your video to. Now, with the exception of animation, I have output video in every one of these codecs, and that's why this project ran so long, because you can see there's so many various different settings for each of the codecs that you can choose. I tried to stick to high quality as much as I can. Um, I've, um, down here under size, You'll also notice in my list that you're about to see, you will notice um, all of the various different listings, um, and that's where this comes from, okay, as far as the, the output type. Okay, so for this project, I chose to, to go with mono just to save some time, and um, let's see, go back here. Um, so anyway, basically just to save some time on this project um, for the testing purposes, Okay, so now that you've got your one minute clip put together, you're going to choose your file, export, and here's what I came up with. This is a very interesting list. I'll try to go through this as quickly as possible. Um, just to sum up everything here as quickly as I can, I'll put this up at the end of the clip so you can pause the video and take a look at it. If you have better options, um, like I said, these are just a small uh, beginning options, you know, that I've started with just for testing purposes. I know somebody out there has uh, the best video quality with the lowest output with the fastest processing time. That's the goal here. Um, you want your quality to be high, you want your file size to be small, and you want it to process very quickly. Um, good luck. So anyway, if you have a specific uh, setting that you use that's really good, please post it. Um, if you have any ideas about this, please post it. Okay, so let's go over this real quick. Um, I'm using a Canon HG10 AVCHD video format. Uh, Final Cut Express, one minute timeline with FX and overlays. My audio output is mono. My um, project uh, uh, camera resolution is 1440 by 1080 native, um, although I've processed a lot of videos at 1920 by 1080. I hear a lot of people talking about the Canon HG10 and the 1440 by 1080 being uh, inferior or less, you know, less quality, whatever, you know, but the fact of the matter is you really don't notice that much of a difference. Uh, you, you don't need to be concerned about the math of this as much as you do the visual, okay? Uh, my original clip size uh, for one minute came out to be 574 megabytes. My project sequence specs are 1080i6, 48 kilohertz, NTSC. Okay, column number one is the test number, okay? And I came back and did a few tests, so I added them in. Um, anything with the star next to it are ones that I favor and that I'll be using more than likely on a regular basis. These, uh, under compression, you'll find the various codecs that I used. Okay, um, RPCI is a raw dump of the video from my MacBook to my PC. Um, unfortunately, this forced me to install iTunes, even though I had QuickTime. Uh, some of the components were missing to play this in a raw format, um, so I downloaded iTunes and it pretty much took care of it. Now some of these, um, I had audio but no video. Now the H.264 gets four stars from me as far as a raw dump uh, onto a PC because the quality was excellent. 
but it's 720 by 480, 16 by 9, and it had the lowest um, actual file size with the highest quality. Um, when I converted it into an MPEG, it had a low file size, although the processing time for a one minute clip was 10 minutes with excellent quality. But I did have a lot of transitions, graphic overlays. If you're just doing raw video with not a lot of uh, little magic tricks and stuff in there, then you're probably going to be okay. All right. So um, M slash PC is I use Video Vangelis to convert my MOV on the Mac into an MPEG format, dumped it to my PC, and tested the quality that way. The number one indicates the processing time for this one minute clip uh, to convert through Video Vangelis in an MPEG format. So this one, the H264, took one minute, but it's somewhat pixelized. Uh, the next one is a uh, long time, which is too long to process, less than a minute pixelized. The one that I really regard highly is going to be, out of all of these, is going to be the JPEG, okay, although when I played it back I noticed some lines uh, that probably has to do with the deinterlacing. I don't think that will be seen once it's burned to a DVD. Um, it took about two minutes and um, there are my settings, 1920 by 1080, 16 by 9. Uh, the raw MOV file turned out to be 595 megabytes. Once converted to an MPEG it was 56 megabytes. It took four minutes to export from Final Cut Express into an MOV and the quality is excellent. Okay, next column real quick. Uh, v size is my resolution 1920 by 1080 with my various settings from the drop down list that I showed you a few minutes ago, so you'll know what that is. Um, the file size, the file uh, sizes on the left are the raw dump uh, for export from Final Cut Express into an MOV file onto my desktop. So these are those file sizes. The MPEG is once it was converted from Video Vangelis um, from an MOV to an MPEG. I didn't do all of these. Some of them took too long. Some of them, it just wasn't worth it. So anyway, uh, the minutes. Okay, this is the actual processing export time from Final Cut Express into an MOV using these various codecs, using all of the various settings over here. And once again, you can see the lowest uh, processing time was using the JPEG. Okay, and that's at 720 by 40, 16 by 9. If you go up to 1920, you double basically the time, and you more than pretty much quadruple the file size. Okay, but the quality is excellent on uh, both of those. Um, okay, I also did one with no compression whatsoever, and I downgraded to 720 by 480. It came out to be 2 gigabytes, but the processing time was 4 minutes. And on my Mac results, here are my personal comments on what I thought about each one of those. I have a little history down here for multipass, interlace, deinterlace, progressive, etc. Uh, here's a few retests that I did. I saw absolutely no change in the quality. Um, my project, my imported video was at 1440 by 1080. I, excuse me, I did my project at 1920 by 1080 in some cases. And I saw no change in the overall resolution of the project. Okay, so anyway, there you have it. I'm going to put the list back up here in a second. I'm going to play you a video real quick. This is my QuickTime raw dump. Okay, the first first option that you choose when you go to export. And this is what that's going to look like. Okay, so this is going to be a 60 second test for Final Cut Express. I'm using a Canon HG10 which uh, is high definition. Um, technically it records at uh, 1440 by 1080, um, although when you import it into Final Cut Express, do your edits and export, you can export in full high def at... Uh... Okay, so there you have it, basically. Um, the quality on that is um, actually really good, and um, the scrolling text in some of the other codecs that I used, the text would jump. You could physically see that it, it's jumping up the screen. Um, the QuickTime codec, it's going to be a larger file size. You're going to have pretty quick processing time um, on your overall project, um, but it is going to be a big file, so that's probably your best bet for professional quality output. Um, okay, I'm going to jump back over here to my um, chart again. I'm going to leave this on screen for as long as I can before my 10 minutes YouTube uh, set time fame is up. Let's see. Okay, there it's centered up pretty well, so I'm just going to leave this here for a minute. You can pause the video and take a look at this. Once again, if you have any ideas or input uh, as to how to code better with smaller space, etc., feel free to post your settings, what you use, what you found the best results with. And as usual, if this video helped you out, post a comment. If not, Pogue Mahone. Peace. Thanks.